Can I buy rural properties in Brazil? And if so, are there any limitations? Hello there, my name is Luciano Oliveira. I'm a Brazilian attorney. And the answer is yes, you can still buy rural properties in Brazil. And the reason why I say still is because there is a, a leadership in Brazil trying to obtain like a prohibition or to make it illegal for foreign citizens to buy rural properties. But as of today, foreign citizens can still buy rural properties in Brazil. Now, there are restrictions. There are many restrictions and I'm going to share the main ones with you but it's pretty important if you're gonna buy rural property in Brazil you must have an attorney reviewing the transaction before you enter into a signed purchase agreement because if you sign an agreement and if you don't perform the seller may try to enforce a penalty against you and you don't want to get entangled in a lawsuit so better have the transaction reviewed up front so you don't get entangled in a bad situation when buying properties in Brazil, if you are a private foreign citizen, if you are a person, then you can buy up to three modules of rural property without any complexities. Basically, you just need to do the closing and the registration of the property at the cartório. In most cases, we're going to see there is an exception because in addition to looking at the individual purchaser, the Brazilian government also has a rule that a specific nationality or all nationalities combined, they cannot own more than a certain percentage of the rural properties in a city. So going back to the rule applicable to a foreign citizen, like as a, an individual, this person may buy up to three modules without much complication. And a module is not an acre, it's not like a square kilometer or anything like this. Each module is going to depend on the city where the property is located. So the general rule is you can buy up to three modules. Now, how big each module is, it's going to depend on the city. So we have in the description below a list of all municipalities in Brazil along with the size of each module. So you take a look at three modules, you multiply by the size of module and you're going to know the size limit that you can buy without much headaches. Now, if you want to buy something bigger than the three modules, is it still feasible? Visible, but then there is an additional complexity to it. Between 3 to 20 modules, you can buy as long as you have an authorization of INCRA, I-N-C-R-A, which is the entity in charge of rural properties and farms and related activities. And you need to propose a project for the development of this area that you're buying. And the idea behind the requirement is that you're not going to be buying land to sit on it and just to wait for this land, you know, to increase in value. The idea is that you're going to be buying a property to develop the land, to create employment, you know, like to bring employees over, I don't know, to develop these lands into agricultural projects. You could have a cattle, you could have other activities. But the point is, if you buy something bigger than three modules and smaller than 20 modules, there is going to be an additional complexity. And then you're going to need to hire in addition to an attorney, to supervise the process. You're going to need to hire a company to develop the project because the project it needs to follow very strict guidelines. So it's not like a business plan you're going to, you know, write over the weekend. It's actually something that's going to be written by a professional with a degree related to farms and development of lands. And it's going to be quite costly. And if the land is bigger than 20 and 50 modules, that's when you're going to need an even more well well detailed project. So between 3 to 20 modules, you basically just need an authorization of INCRA and you need to present a business plan. Now between 20 and 50, then there is going to be a higher involvement of the authorities. They are probably going to review your projects. They're going to make questions. You're going to need to make presentations. You're going to need to order a bunch of studies like research on the land. And that's only how sizes between 20 and 50 modules are going to be allowed. Now, after 50 modules, it's basically impossible for you. It's basically prohibited for a foreign citizen to buy anything bigger than 50 modules. And again, the 
there is a leadership as we speak that they are trying to get legislation approved to change the current rules and to make even more difficult for foreign citizens to buy rural land in Brazil. Now, when it comes to a company, it's also possible for a company to buy rural property in Brazil. I mean, I'm talking, of course, about a foreign business entity, but for foreign business entities, it doesn't matter the size. They are going to need an authorization, an approval from INCRA. So if you have a company, it gets started in the like more complex level right off the bat. There is no minimum size that a company could buy without a lot of questioning. I'm going to give an example. One of the requirements is that like the partners for this foreign company, they are going to need to sign a declaration that there is no other land owned by the company. In other words, a company can only buy a single tract of land and there must be, in addition to this declaration, other reassurances from the company that they are going to develop the land. Now, remember that I told you that even if you're buying as a private buyer, like a person, as an individual, you still have some additional requirements. And the rules, they go like this. If you combine all the different nationalities, so let's say the Amazon, there is a bunch of foreign citizens in the Amazon. And if you take into consideration a single municipality, foreign citizens combined, they cannot own more than 25% of the available land in the municipality, right? So imagine a tiny town like in the middle of the Amazon and you have uh, you have US citizens, you have uh, Swiss citizens, you have Chinese, you have uh, Australians. So all of them combined, they cannot own more than 25%. So if by chance, you know, like the existing foreign citizens over there, they buy this limit of 25%, it doesn't matter if you're new, if you don't have anything, you're not going to be able to buy anything because this threshold for the combined nationalities was met already. In addition to the combined nationalities, there is also a limit per nationality and this limit is 10%. So going back to our example in this small town in the heart of Amazon, if US citizens already bought 10% of all the land in the municipality, the next US citizen, they're not going to be able to buy any acres or any modules at all. On the other hand, if there is a Swiss citizen coming into town, he's not going to be constrained by the 10% because the 10% was reached by the US citizens and not the Swiss citizens. So the Swiss citizen could still buy rural property in the area. And this is just a, like an overview of the requirements uh, to buy rural land in Brazil. After the three acres, you know, the complexity increases substantially. So even if you're buying under three modules, is it still advisable for you to meet with an attorney, to have your uh, proposed transaction reviewed by an attorney? Because you basically don't know what other citizens from your nationality or or citizens from other nationalities are doing in the area. So it is important for you, again, to review the transaction before you sign a purchase agreement, because once you sign a purchase agreement, you have a commitment to the seller, and if you cannot perform, you can incur in penalties. I hope this information was helpful, and if it was, please like this video so other people can find this content and follow us for more tips.